In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a scatter plot in SPSS. In order to make a scatter plot, both your x and your y axis variables should be interval or ratio. And in SPSS, this is defined as scale. And this is because for a scatter plot, it's assuming there's a meaningful order to both the x and the y axis variables. I'm also going to show you how to add a trend line. So in our data file, we have employee's age, and we also have their total competency score out of 100 when they started their job. So I want to look and see, is there a relationship between how old someone is and how competent they are when they begin their job? So if we go to the graphs menu and chart builder, we want to choose scatter dot from the left, and we want the first scatter dot option. So go ahead and double click or drag it into the gallery. And now we need to put our variables on the x and the y. Our independent variable, which is the variable that's not going to change. So in other words, my age will not change if I become more competent or less competent. That variable goes on the x-axis. Your dependent variable, which is the variable that possibly could change. So for example, my competency score may depend upon my age. That variable goes on the y-axis. Go ahead and click OK. And here's our scatter plot. So what we're looking for in a scatter plot is some kind of trend. So it looks to me like as people get older, they tend to be more competent when they start their job. And that's probably because they have more experience and more education um, in their field. Now, there are a few points here, a few individuals who look like they're outside the normal. So these three people here are, are all different ages, but they have a similar competency. So they're not part of my general trend upwards. If you are doing a correlation or regression analysis and you want to add the trend line to your graph, double click on your graph to open the chart editor. And then up here at the top, you've got an icon. This is add fit line at total. So if you click on that, in your properties window, you have different fit methods. Now my relationship here between age and total competency is pretty clearly linear, which means it's going in a straight line upwards. But if you have a different shape to your trend, you have options here for quadratic or cubic, etc. I'm going to leave it as linear. Close. Now when I do that, I get an R squared value. And R squared value is coming from an R or a correlation. Um, and it's also something that comes out in a regression model. Now we usually interpret R squared by multiplying it by 100 to turn it into a percent. So that would be 5.2%, which is very, very low. And what it tells us is that approximately 5.2% of the variation in competency um, between our employees can be explained by age. So not very much. That means there's roughly 94, 95% um, of total competency scores that cannot be explained by someone's age. We're going to go ahead and close this. Now, just one thing I want to show you, um, a common mistake students make is to you try to use ordinal variables when they make a scatter plot and they get something that looks a bit strange. So if we go to graphs, I'm going to show you um, what will happen. Hit the reset, my scatter in, and I'm going to choose two of my ordinal variables. So organizational commitment and I'll use satisfaction. Click OK. OK, now you notice it's very difficult to notice a trend, um, and that's because along the bottom I only have five possible categories, and along the side I only have five possible categories. So that means I only have a possibility of 25 different points that could be on this graph. And sometimes you'll get where all 25 points are um, filled in, so all of them have bubbles. So this is one reason why um, ordinal data is not suitable for a scatter graph, because it's very, very difficult to see any relationship or trend. So make sure that your data scale when you try to do this type of graph.